This is the reason why the Mona Lisa, which was painted by Leonardo da Vinci, became the best painting of the time. Mona Lisa, also known as La Gioconda, is the wife of Francesco del Giocondo. This painting is painted as oil on wood. The original painting is owned by the government of France and is on the wall in the Louvre. This figure of a woman, dressed in the Florentine fashion of her day and seated in a visionary, mountainous landscape, is a remarkable instance of Leonardo's sfumato technique, heavily shaded modeling. The Mona Lisa's enigmatic expression, which seems both alluring and aloof, has given the portrait universal fame. Although Leonardo worked on this picture as a scholar and thinker, not only as a painter and poet, the scientific and philosophical aspects of his research inspired no following. But the formal aspect the new presentation, the nobler attitude, and the increased dignity of the model had a decisive influence over Florentine portraits of the next 20 years, over the classical portrait. The Mona Lisa alone is a living enigma. The soul is there, but inaccessible. Hidden Secret of Mona Lisa Part 1 Leonardo da Vinci and the Golden Section Leonardo da Vinci is drawn according to the golden ratio. The golden ratio is 1 divided by 0.618 and has been coined golden because it is said to be aesthetically pleasing. The golden proportion can be found throughout the human body. A golden rectangle is simply a rectangle with dimensions that reflect the golden ratio. The Mona Lisa has many golden rectangles throughout the painting. According to historians, the golden ratio was first studied by ancient Greek mathematicians. While some believe the Grecians did associate the ratio with aesthetics and even applied it to achieve beauty, many argue it was intentionally used in the Parthenon, there is little evidence to support this. The book written by mathematician Luca Piccioli, and illustrated by Leonardo da Vinci, is widely lauded for its clear writing and stunning illustrations. Many believe these qualities allowed the book to reach and occupy artistic circles. This is why, the Mona Lisa composition is perfect. Leonardo dissected 30 cadavers. Before painting Mona Lisa, Leonardo previously dissected 30 cadavers to study their anatomy. Da Vinci was not the only Renaissance artist who performed human dissections, and his findings were not always correct. Yet, his anatomical studies remained scientifically significant. He correctly described the heart as the center of the blood system and was the first to describe it as a muscle with four chambers. He discovered how small vortices of blood help shut the aortic valve. But because his scientific papers and anatomical drawings went unpublished for centuries, this mechanism wasn't confirmed until the late 1960s. Da Vinci often dissected by candlelight, taking left-handed, mirrored notes throughout the process. Leonardo da Vinci dissected some 30 cadavers in his lifetime, leaving behind a trove of beautiful, and accurate, anatomical drawings. Tiny Numbers and Letters in the Eyes of the Mona Lisa Hidden in the dark paint of her pupils, are tiny letters and numbers, placed there by the artist Leonardo da Vinci, and revealed only now thanks to high magnification techniques.
Silvano Vinci, president of Italy's National Committee for Cultural Heritage, which spotted the symbols, said, to the naked eye the symbols are not visible but with a magnifying glass they can clearly be seen. In the right eye appear to be the letters LV which could well stand for his name, Leonardo da Vinci, while in the left eye there are also symbols but they are not as defined. It is very difficult to make them out clearly but they appear to be the letters C, E, or it could be the letter B. In the arch of the bridge in the background the number 72 can be seen or it could be an L in the number 2. We also know that da Vinci was very esoteric and used symbols in his work to give out messages. Who knows, they may even possibly be a love message to the figure in the painting. Mona Lisa's Smile There is a mystery to the smile. As we stare, it flickers. What is she thinking? Our eyes move a bit, and her smile seems to change. The mystery compounds. We look away, and the smile lingers in our minds, as it does in the collective mind of humanity. Never in a painting have motion and emotion, the paired touch tones of Leonardo's art, been so intertwined. At the time when he was perfecting Lisa's smile, Leonardo was spending his nights in the depths of the morgue under the hospital of Santa Maria Nuova. Peeling the flesh off cadavers and exposing the muscles and nerves underneath. He became fascinated about how a smile begins to form and instructed himself to analyze every possible movement of each part of the face and determine the origin of every nerve that controls each facial muscle. Tracing which of those nerves are cranial and which are spinal may not have been necessary for painting a smile, but Leonardo needed to know. Scientists recently found a technical way to describe all of this. A clear smile is much more apparent in the low spatial frequency images than in the high spatial frequency image. According to Harvard Medical School neuroscientist Margaret Livingstone, Thus, if you look at the painting so that your gaze falls on the background or on Mona Lisa's hands, your perception of her mouth would be dominated by low spatial frequencies. So it would appear much more cheerful than when you look directly at her mouth. So the world's most famous smile is inherently and fundamentally elusive. And therein lies Leonardo's ultimate realization about human nature. His expertise was in depicting the outer manifestation of inner emotions. But here in the Mona Lisa he shows something more important. That we can never fully know true emotion from outer manifestations. There is always a sfumato quality to other people's emotions, always a veil. Thank you for watching. See you in part 2.